Hi, in this video, I show you how to make concrete calculations to establish the security or the absence of security of a pseudo random generator. So the first skill that I uh, require in my course, of course, to be able to follow the description of a pseudo random generator. So I will typically give a very simple description. So for example, here you have a function. So the pseudo random uh, generator is described as a function of input n bits, so which would be the key, and it only spits out two times n bits. Uh, that's not a really good pseudo random generator. It's even worse when you look at the description, because what it does is it takes x1, xn and returns x1, x2, x1, x2, x3, x4, x3, x4. Okay, so this is a, uh, there's a very clearly identifiable pattern. So, but the first questions uh, before we move into uh, calculating uh, uh, the security or establishing that there is no formally establishing there's no security uh, beyond just a simple intuition that there is a pretty identifiable pattern is I will ask, okay, can you uh, calculate the output of the pseudo random generator on a certain input? So for example, uh, 110001, and can you encrypt a message uh, um, with that pseudo random generator used to produce the key stream. Okay, so let's let's get started with uh, so uh, calculating g of uh, one one uh, zero zero uh, zero one. Okay, so all we do is repeat the digits pair by pair. I mean, uh, so one one repeated one one, then zero zero repeated zero zero and then zero, 01 repeated zero, 01 okay so that's very simple as long as we understand the definition of the uh, pseudo random generator now to use it as key stream uh, as part of a stream cipher so uh, what we do is we uh, usually uh, write the uh, key stream and the message. So this is the key stream here that we've just produced. And then the message, we, um, I mean, it's convenient to uh, write it down just underneath the key stream. So that would be 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, then 0, 0, 1, and then, uh, oh, another one, and then 0, 0, 0. And then we will do the XOR bit by bit. So remember the XOR of one and one is zero. And otherwise the XOR of, of one and, and zero is one and the XOR of zero and zero is zero. So basically XOR behaves like the addition, except if you have one XOR by one, in which case you have zero, okay? So bit by bit, what it gives you is, zero uh, so one by zero is one one by zero is one one by one is a zero one by one is a zero and then one zero zero one 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 zero one okay and that gives you the cipher text okay so if you are to calculate the uh, encryption of this particular message with that g used as the key stream that's what you would get okay so that would be a typical question just to uh, just to get warmed up so now let's move on to a concrete definition of security. So two ways of uh, uh, looking at the security of, uh, of pseudo random generators uh, that we see in our class. The one is to use a statistical test. So what's a statistical test? It's a function okay, of input uh, that has the uh, size of the uh, uh, key stream, okay? So here we have two n bits, okay? That's what your uh, input should be. And then, so the output is a zero if a certain condition is satisfied. So for example, here it would be, uh, I'm giving you the statistical test that does R2 equals R3, then boom, it's a zero. Otherwise it's a one, excuse the typo here. So then we calculate the advantage so the question would be uh, calculate the advantage of that statistical test. So that advantage is made of two, uh, uh, two elements. So first, it's the probability that your statistical test on input a random sequence R1, R2n returns zero when R1 and R, uh, R1 to R2n is drawn uniformly at random independently, okay? So what we're asking here is what's the probability that when I draw R R1, R2, R2n uniformly at random and independently, what's the probability that R2 and R3 are the same? Well, the, the 
obvious answer here is it's a one half. Okay, so we have a 50% chance that R2 and R3 uh, be the same. Now, the other value that uh, that we use to calculate the uh, advantage of that statistical test against uh, uh, the pseudo random generator is when we feed it this time not with randomness but with g of k1 kn okay and we ask the same question what's the probability that this is zero but this time when k1 kn are drawn uniformly at random okay so what are we asking so remember this g of k1 kn that's k1 k2 k1 k2 and then a bunch of other things. So the second and the third bits here are respectively k2 and k1. Okay, what are the chances that k2 and k1 be the same when k1, k2, k3 are drawn independently, uniformly at random? Well, that chance is also one half. Okay, and then the advantage uh, of this, uh, um, the advantage of this is just the difference, uh, the, the absolute value of the difference uh, between those two probabilities. So one half and one half. So the advantage is zero. So what does this mean, morally speaking? That means that the particular statistical test that we chose is not very good at establishing that there is a pattern in the output of the pseudo random generator. That does not mean the PRG is secure. It just means that we cannot establish it's insecure just using that statistical test. Now remember, to be secure, you have to be secure against, I mean, you have to, to, to thwart all possible statistical tests. Here we have our PRG that only resisted one attack again, uh, with a statistical test. Now let's move on to another statistical test, one that will establish that this PRG is not a good one. This time, we're doing almost the same thing, but we, uh, instead of looking at those, the, those two bits, we're going to look at whether or not R1 and R3 are the same and return zero if it is the case and one if it is not the case, okay? So this time we look at the probability that A of, so R1, R2n, is zero when R1 and R2n are drawn uniformly at random. So this is the question, is R1 equal to R3 when R1 and R3 are, are uniformly drawn uniformly at random and independently? Well, uh, that is still a probability one half, okay? Now, we're asking the other value, okay, that will be used to make up for uh, the advantage of that statistical test, namely, the probability that that statistical test on input g of k1 kn be zero okay for k1 kn drawn uniformly at random okay now what that means so remember k g of k1 kn is k1 k2 k1 k2 and a bunch of other things so the third bits and sorry the first and the third bits are always the same Okay, and what that means is we return the statistical tests return zero all the time. So what that means is we have a, a probably one. And what's the advantage? Well, the advantage here is the difference, the absolute value of the difference between those two values, which is one half, and that's non negligible. And because it's non negligible, what that means is we have uh, we have shown that there is a statistical test that that returns zero with, uh, I mean, whose difference in behavior is non negligible. Okay, so uh, between when it's fed with random versus uh, when it's fed with the uh, output of the uh, pseudo random generator. So what we have here is the fact that uh, uh, we have uh, an insecure pseudo random generator, and that's one way to show it. Now, quickly, I'm going to show a different way to prove that uh, uh, this is uh, uh, insecure. So, uh, and that's the uh, prediction game. Okay, so that's the other way. So if either you have a statistical test 
that has a, diff uh, a significant different probability of returning zero when receiving random versus receiving an output of, the, of G. But the other way uh, to prove insecurity is to show that it's predictable. So being predictable, remember, is when you fed the adverse, when you feed the adversary with a certain number of bits, there is a non-negligible, I mean, there's a probably significantly bigger than one half uh, to return uh, uh, the next bit, okay? So here we have a very, very simple uh, adversary. And what we're asking is the following. What is the probability that when you give g, so when you take g of k and you take the one and the second bit, okay, what is the probability that this returns the third bit of g of k, okay? Okay, so this, so this k1, so on g of k, or k1, k2, okay, so what you have is this is A, where you give it K1, K2, okay? And by definition of the adversary that I described in the question, it will return the first bit of the sequence, okay? And that's, well, I just did it because I know that's that pseudo-random generator. It takes K1, K2, K3, K4, and returns K1, K2, K1, K2. So it will systematically put on the third position what was given to him on the first position, okay? And so this is, of course, K1. So the probability here that the adversary returns successfully, successfully predicts the third bit is equal to one. Now, what's the advantage? There's a slight subtlety here. So if I call that probability P, the advantage is in fact P minus one half, okay? The absolute value of that. So if you have, for example, a probably zero, probably one, then you're gonna maximize your advantage, but it's never gonna be above one half with that definition. And that's because we really want to define an advantage that would be zero for a very bad adversary, and, and well, then it can only go up to one half with that definition because, well, if I guess at random, I always have a 50% chance of guessing the next bit, okay? So with that definition, but I'm not really asking you in the questions in a test to question the uh, definition, but you have to remember to establish that advantage, you have to take that probably and take minus one half, okay? So in our case here, we have an advantage that is one minus one half, which is one half. It's about as good as it can get. And what that means is that pseudo-random generator, of course, is entirely predictable and therefore insecure. So thank you for listening. Now you know how to calculate the advantage of a statistical test or an adversary in the predictability game. Thank you for listening.